Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood? in the blood of the Lamb? Are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood? In the blood of the Lamb, there's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean. Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed in the blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the Melvin to come take up our offering tonight. Let's sing He Abides. I'm rejoicing night and day as I walk the pilgrim way for the hand of God in all life I see. And the reason of my bliss, just the secret of the Comforter abides with me. He abides, He abides, hallelujah, He abides with me. I'm rejoicing night and day as I walk the narrow way, for the Comforter abides with me. Once my heart was full of sin, once I had no peace within, till I heard Jesus died upon the tree. Then I fell down at his feet, and there came a peace so sweet. Now the Comforter abides with me. He abides, he abides. Hallelujah, he abides with me. I'm rejoicing night and day as I walk the narrow way for the Comforter abides. Thirsting for the things of the world, they taken wings long ago. I gave them up and instantly, all my night was turned to day, all my burdens rolled away. Now the Comforter abides with me. He abides, he abides, hallelujah, he abides with me. I'm rejoicing night and day. As I walk the narrow way, for the Comforter abides with me. Praise the Lord. I think this is in the key of C. I keep falling in love with Him. I keep falling in love with Him over and over and over and over. Falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. He gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a love between my Lord and I. I keep falling in love with him over and over, over and over again. When I first fell in love with Jesus, I gave I keep falling in love with 
children to come sing for us? It will take us all to heaven. 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 It will take us all to heaven.
at Easter where our Lord died and rose again that's why I can say I'm a child of the King the King Most High Once I was clothed in the rags of my sin Compare. 
James Howe in the key of C. <laughs> Supreme 
sacrifice that was needed that could buy eternal life for you and me had it not been for a place called Mount Calvary had it not been for the old rugged cross had it not been for a man called Jesus then forever my soul drink that bitter cup although he prayed father let it pass from me and I'm so glad he didn't call heaven's angels from my hand please pull the nails that torment me had it not been for a place called Mount Calvary had it not been for the old rugged cross had it not been for a man called Jesus then forever my soul would be lost Miss Regina you got a song for us Beat flat
would do uh, I Lean On You in D chord. I lean on you, Lord. I lean on you, Lord. For the things that I need, I lean on you. When I don't know just what to do, I got the faith you're going to see me through. To supply my every need, I lean on you. I have been on the mountain when the sun was shining bright. I've been in the valley when the clouds were black as night. I've been betrayed like Jesus by a friend who wasn't true. But in the good times or the bad times, Lord, I've learned to lean on you. I lean on you, Lord. I lean on you, Lord. For the things that I need, I lean on you. When I don't know just what to do, I got the faith you're going to see me through. To supply my every need, I lean on you. I've heard the battle raging, then I prayed till victory came. There's been times I really thought, Lord, you don't even know my name. But I've been blessed and I've been down to where I didn't know what to do. But in times of joy or sorrow, Lord, I've learned to lean on you. I lean on you, Lord. I lean on you, Lord. For the things that I need, I lean on you. When I don't know just what to do, I've got the faith you're going to see me through. To supply my every need, I lean on you. That's why I'm leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all along. Leaning, leaning, but in the good times or the bad times, Lord, I've learned to lean on you. Anybody else want to sing? No takers. Anybody want to testify? Lord been good to you this week. quiet bunch on a Wednesday. Y'all must be sleepy like I am. We sung a lot of songs. We just had Easter, you know, Easter Sunday, and we, we sing about the, the purple robe that Jesus wore and uh, the crown of thorns, and he bled and he died for our sins. And uh, then George sings, she's a child of the king, and we certainly are a child of the king because he died for us, and we accept him into our hearts and into our lives, and uh, we live with him. And that's, you know, what salvation is all about, right? Uh, the Lord Jesus dying for our sins and uh, we come unto him by, by way of the cross and uh, accepting him into our heart and our lives and living for him and uh, asking for the forgiveness of our sins and every time the kids sing uh, old time religion it reminds me uh, of an old movie I like old movies I don't like new stuff uh, but anyway I uh, watched this when I was a young boy with, with dad one night and it was uh uh, Sergeant York. If you don't know anything about Sergeant York, he was a World War uh, I uh, hero. 
uh, from the hills of Tennessee. Hello up there in Tennessee if you're watching. But anyway, uh, that's where he was from and uh, he was uh, wanting to buy a piece of bottom land. He was wanting to uh, plow this piece of bottom land and uh, he kind of got uh, hoodooed out of it, you know, and uh, he wasn't going to church and he wasn't saved and uh, he liked to drink a little bit. This is just a little history of, of Alvin C. York. Uh, but in the movie, I don't know if it was all based on true stories or not, uh, but he was uh, just left the little... Um, bar I guess it was and uh, had been drinking and it was storming and he was carrying his his rifle and he's riding the horse through the woods there and uh, a lightning streak came down and, and hit the barrel of his gun knocked him off his horse uh, and he come to his senses and got back on his horse and he heard the singing coming from the old church uh, where his mother and his his sister and uh, brother were and uh, they were in there singing old time religion uh, and here comes Alvin C. York coming through the doors uh, of the church there. And the preacher's up there, old Walter Brennan, if you know Walter Brennan. Uh, I just, I like old old movies. But this is a true story. It's based uh, on a true story of Alvin York. Uh, but Alvin come through those doors, and they were singing old-time religion. And he kept getting closer and closer. And his mother, she I guess she'd been praying for him for a long time. And you could see a picture of her in the movie. And she just all excited, overwhelmed with joy because Alvin was coming. And the closer and closer he got. And that preacher, old Walter Brennan, it was good for Paul and Silas. And I just love whenever time they sing that song, that's the very thing that comes to my mind is old Walter Brennan. And there's old Alvin C. York. And he's pointing to him to get down there in the altar uh, to forgive him, of, you know, to pray through. But uh, we like it, old songs right old time religion and then we sing uh, had it not been or for the old rugged cross had it not been uh, for the old rugged cross where would we be we'd have no uh, no hope we'd have no uh, eternal life right uh, we would all be be down we'd all wind up in hell right that's where we would uh, because we're sinners we're saved by grace nothing that we can do nothing we could do on our own but it takes it took Jesus coming and dying for us right and we know that salvation is the very uh, core of our Christianity. Uh, if, it was for, uh, if it was for our salvation that Jesus came uh, to us as a man uh, and he lived among us and he was, uh, uh, Jesus was a servant uh, of the people and that's what we are to be, uh, servants of the people. But um, he lived among us as a servant, of them as a servant. And Jesus came uh, to seek and save uh, that which uh, was lost. We know he didn't come uh, to save the religious leaders, you know, uh, but he came uh, to save and seek out and save that uh, which is lost. And we know that he is the Lamb of God uh, because when John the Baptist was baptizing him, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away uh, the sins of the world. Nothing uh, else, all those lambs that they, uh, that they sacrificed uh, wasn't going to take our sins away, right? Uh, it was only good enough for them. They had to do it every year, but it really wasn't uh, doing anything for them uh, because it took the blood of, of Jesus, uh, God's Son, to, to take away all the sins uh, of the world. And the very name uh, of Jesus uh, just simply means Savior. Um, uh, the message proclaimed by the angels there uh, in the, to the shepherds on the night of Christ's birth. Uh, for there is to you born this day in the city of David, what? A Savior, which is Christ uh, the Lord there. And, and long before uh, that majestic uh, event, uh, the prophets had, had declared uh, the coming of the Savior. They had talked about the promise of the, the soon to come uh, Messiah, right? Um, and so... Uh, his role as a savior uh, had been determined before really creation uh, of the world uh, because God knew uh, that he knows everything. There's nothing that he don't know. He, he knows it all, right? So he knew even when he was creating uh, the universe, when he was creating the heavens and when he was uh, creating the earth and uh, when he made uh, the animals and the, and the waters and the fish and uh, then when he made Adam, he knew that uh, Adam was going to fall for the beautiful eyes of Eve <laughs> and eat uh, of the apple, right? He knew, that, he knew all of this. Uh, so before he even started uh, doing what he was doing, he already had a plan uh, for when Adam fell right and it was going to take a little time before that plan uh, would unfold uh, but but he already had a plan God already has a plan uh, for your life and for my life uh, he knows uh, 
uh, what's going to happen within our lives. He, he sees what's going to happen in the next second or next day uh, because he's the creator of all things, and he's the God that knows all things. And so he knew even before he started creating uh, the creation and the, and the earth and all, he knew that he was going to have to have a plan. So he already had the plan. And it was going to be his very son uh, that he would send uh, to die for our sins. And how many of us in here could let one of our sons or daughters die uh, for our, you know, we, it would be a terrible thing. We couldn't go through with it, right? Uh, but uh, God did. Abraham was going to do it. Uh, but thank God he provided a sacrifice, provided a ram. Uh, but that was Abraham's faith. Uh, but God had a plan for that ram to be in that thicket, right? Uh, but he, he knows uh, everything that, that's going to go on. And there in First Peter uh, chapter 1, verse 20 there, uh, Peter begins uh, his letter to a, uh, to a suffering and a scattered church uh, by reaffirming the basics of salvation. He, was, uh, he uses the marvelous expressive uh, words such as elect and uh, living hope and abundantly mercy uh, and in, incorruptible, you know, uh, talking about an incorruptible seed and an undefiled uh, inheritance. And salvation uh, is assured for all those of us who trust in Jesus Christ uh, this wonderful knowledge, right? It's a wonderful thing. All we got to do is so simple. All you have to do is just trust in the Lord Jesus Christ that he died for your sins, uh, that he is the Son of God, uh, and confess your sins before him uh, and live a holy life. And, and, and we're not perfect. We're, we're, there's a song that says, uh, I'm not what I want to be. I'm not... Uh, what I'm going to be, but thank God I'm not what I was. Uh, so when you become saved and uh, and accept Christ in your heart, uh, that old style of life that you were living, I don't, uh, I haven't really lived a, an extravagant life. <laughs> I guess I mean I have working in the church and, and serving the Lord, but uh, I haven't uh, been on the the bad side of things. I guess I. I haven't been in the, uh, you didn't have to come get me out of the honky-tonk or, or anything like that. But uh, I guess in a lot of ways, we kind of lived a little bit of a sheltered life there, uh, living in with, with, with Dad and him being a, a preacher. But you always hear, watch out for the preacher's kids, right? Uh, but uh, we did live a, a very sheltered uh, life in a lot of ways um, because, I mean, we didn't, really get to go to the movies and, and different things like that. I mean, at least we did have TV, had the antenna on top of the house, and you had to turn the little dial, you know, to, to tune in and watch Batman or something. <laughs> but uh, and we didn't get to watch a lot of violent uh, movies, and about the most violent thing we ever got, I ever watched was uh, uh, John Wayne. <laughs> uh, but uh, at least we did get to watch John Wayne. That's one of my uh, all-time American heroes there, uh, John Wayne. But uh, anyway, but we, we, we kind of grew up and and, it, and I ain't saying it's, it's been a, a bad thing. It's been a good thing uh, growing up in a, in a good Christian home with the good uh, parents that we have and uh, trying to do the best they could uh, to lead us in the right direction, not saying we've always <laughs> done right or, or done anything perfect, uh, but ain't nobody in here perfect. So uh, anyway, but we, they, they led us uh, to the salvation knowledge. They told us about uh, Jesus Christ, and they drug us to church. You know, Angie said one time we had a drug problem, and it was them dragging us to church because, I mean, that's what we did most of the time on uh, Friday, Saturday night if Brother Hall was close by. We were in Brother Hall's meeting, whether it be in Asheville, Wilkesboro, uh, Mount Holly, or here. And then Dad started his revivals, and we were in church Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday I mean, that's, church is all we've we've ever known, and that's that's a great thing, though, right? I mean, it's it's being in church and and and, and being a Christian and, and trying to live live right and live for Jesus is is the most uh, wonderful thing you can do. It, it, and it's not saying it's all been a bed of roses because it's not been. I mean, uh, but at least we know uh, that we have assurance in, in our Lord Jesus Christ uh, that our sins have been forgiven. And if we need anything, all we got to do is ask. He said, all you got to do is ask and it shall be done, right? And so uh, that's what salvation is all about. It's not about uh, how bad you were. Uh, I mean, look at uh, Mary Magdalene. He cast seven demons out of her. Uh, and you could go through all the list of the disciples. They all had uh, different problems, different issues, uh, right? He didn't pick the very best. He didn't pick the very the, the prettiest uh, cherry or, or apple off the bushes for his 12 disciples, right? Um, and, he, and he knows uh, uh, that we weren't perfect, but he knew 
that he could shape and mold us, right? Because one day we will be uh, perfect because we'll see Jesus as he is and we shall be uh, like him, right? Uh, we won't, we're not going to be exactly like him sometime uh, on this side of, of eternity, but we, we strive to do that. We strive uh, to let our light shine uh, for Jesus. We try to make sure uh, we set a watchman at our mouth and say uh, the right things as a Christian would talk and, and try to have the right actions as a Christian would have because uh, that's that's what we're to do. We're to be a light uh, shining on a hill uh, to this world um, that, they, that they may come uh, to know Jesus. We don't want to uh, run anybody off. I mean, right? Just because they, uh, they're not uh, saved, it's because they're a sinner, right? Uh, we want to tell them about how great things are and tell them what uh, this salvation is all about. Tell them about uh, how uh, a king uh, was born to us in a stable. He wasn't born over to Marriott. He was born in a stable, in a manger, with the cows and the donkeys and the horses. Um, wasn't born in a, in a nice hospital or anything. Uh, he was born in a lowly manger. Uh, shepherds came uh, to see him. Of course, the wise men came to see him as well. Uh, but he came as, in a lowly manger. He come down uh, for the lowest of the lowest. He didn't come down uh, for those that was the, uh, the high and mighty or the the religious leaders or whatever but he came down to save us the, the ones that's down there on the bottom I always say sometimes scraping the bottom of the barrel uh, but Jesus came and died for us uh, us sinners uh, he came that we would have life and have life more abundantly uh, that we could be with him and, and live with him uh, one of these days and I don't know how long it's going to be um, we've heard it all of our life that Jesus is coming back he certainly is because uh, I seen something on Facebook the other day is he's talking about uh, the you know we're we just read a little bit ago about the birth of our, our Savior, our Messiah. Uh, it happened. Uh, then we, it, it said on there about Jesus dying. It happened. And then it said on there about he arose. It happened. Uh, and he's coming again, and it'll happen uh, because that, it will happen. Everything that the Bible uh, tells us, everything you read in the Bible, uh, it happened. And so it's going to happen uh, one of these days. It may be before we get home tonight, or it may, who knows? I, I don't know. But he said, be, always be ready. Be prepared uh, to meet your God, right? But we know Jesus is coming back. So we want to take uh, as many with us as we can. Uh, you know, it's broad is the way to destruction, but narrow is the way uh, that leads to heaven. And a lot of people, they, they take that broad road because it, the devil can paint you a pretty picture. He can paint it so pretty. Uh, and make everything look so much grander, right? They even tried that with Jesus when he's in the wilderness, trying to show him all uh, the things there that he could have if he would just bow out and worship him. Uh, but we got a better thing ahead, uh, a better thing, a place called heaven uh, where we can worship our God that, that, that created us for one, and he created man uh, to have fellowship with him, right? And so we have fellowship with him on this side uh, of eternity, and we'll be able to fellowship with him for all as the ages roll uh, on uh, for when the Lord comes back and we get to go home, either by the way of the rapture or uh, by way of the grave. And so uh, we've got a lot to look forward to. Uh, we know that Jesus uh, can heal. I know people having terrible times with uh, cancers and sicknesses and different things. Uh, they told me I had uh, cancer and I thought I was eat up with it and I was worried to death a year ago. I didn't know what was going on. I just had them places just coming up. Uh, all I could do was just cry out to Jesus. I mean, there's a lot of days uh, during that time until I started getting some negative uh, test reports back, you know. Uh, that I would just be sitting in my office at work and, and everybody gone home and I'd have all the lights out and I'd just be sitting there and just, you know, just start crying because uh, fear comes against you, right? Um, and so, but all I could do was just keep praying uh, to Jesus, you know, and just plead the blood uh, of Jesus over whatever this was attacking me. Uh, and the Lord move, and, and he don't move for everybody. We, we don't understand a lot of things. There are a lot of things you don't understand. Uh, but it's not our place to question him, right? Uh, but he did move uh, for me. And so if he moved for me, that means he can move uh, for anyone else. And so uh, we don't always want to believe that final report, but sometimes we, we think that death mark has just got us, you know. Uh, but the Lord moved, and everything uh, seems to be fine. Every, everything uh, has worked out, and they've done all them crazy tests, and, and uh, I can't remember what that one was. It's... Uh, uh, 
some kind of crazy test. I had to put that dye in me, and I had to lay there forever and cat scan. I, yeah, and uh, I was worried to death about that. And I had to sit back there an hour before they could take me in there to do that crazy machine. I was back there by myself. Uh, but <clears throat> the Gideons had left a Bible <laughs> in the room. And so I just went over and got that Bible and sat there and just read the Word of God. And it, it gave me peace uh, because you can start reading the Bibles. You start reading if you're going through a storm or going through a crisis or going through a sickness. You start reading the Bible because it can soothe your soul. Uh, the words that you read of, of, about uh, different things and how... Uh, uh, prophets of old made it and how Jesus made a way uh, for so many people the woman with the issue of blood he healed them uh, healed her and he, he healed the lame man by sitting by the beautiful gate and uh, healed the blind man he raised Lazarus from the dead uh, they were uh, Jesus told him he would live again they, and, they, and they understood that because Jesus had talked about uh, the afterlife or whatever uh, to the disciples and they, they said yeah Lord he will uh, in that day uh, but they didn't, gee, they didn't understand that they had uh, God made man there that he was going to raise Lazarus uh, beforehand and so he raised Lazarus from the dead and so if he certainly raised Lazarus from the dead you'd have thought uh, they could have really realized that when he told them uh, that on the third day he would rise right uh, but they still didn't really believe that Jesus would die. Uh, but they, they believed he would die, but they didn't believe he would raise up like he did on the third day, but he did, because when he went there, he, he wasn't there. Uh, but then he finally appeared to them, and uh, they believed all things. Uh, they believed that uh, Jesus, he, you know, uh, he was he had died for the sins of the world, and they started going out uh, and preaching this gospel message uh, to the world about about this man called Jesus that came, uh, and he bled and he died uh, for your sins and my sins, uh, and he rose again on the third day, and he's coming back uh, for us, and we can forever be with him uh, if we'll just uh, live for him. So that that's really what salvation is all about uh, confessing your sins to, the, to, to God and accepting him uh, for who he is and what he's done uh, for your life and, it, and, and living as a Christian really ain't all that bad it really not uh, you ain't missing a thing by not going to the honky tonk you ain't missing a thing by, by doing all kinds of crazy stuff uh, living for God is the best life you, that you could ever live uh, and, and you're going you're gonna to have some sad days uh, but you got a God that will come along and pick you up and, and put a smile on your face just start read, uh, reading the Bible or sing a song that comes uh, to your heart or to your mind uh, and, and really let everybody else know uh, what salvation is all about let the whole world know uh, what the Lord Jesus Christ did for you uh, so and, and that he can do the same uh, for them that they can accept him uh, for who he is and accept him that he bled uh, that he died uh, for their sins and that they can uh, go to heaven with us because we don't want to leave anybody uh, here behind we want to uh, take all we can and, uh, and let them know the good news let them know the good news of the gospel let them know that Christians ain't all that bad uh, what they see sometimes on on the news and uh, sub churches and preachers can make us all look bad, but uh, we won't go there. Uh, but uh, tell them the, the, the truth about the gospel, uh, that, that Jesus came and he died for you, uh, and he loves you because no one else can love you uh, like Jesus and like God does. Uh, God loved us so much that he, that he gave us his only son, his only begotten son. That's, that's a lot of love. That's more love than anybody in here could give anyone uh, because we couldn't give our son or daughter up uh, for someone else. Uh, but God did it. He gave up his only begotten son, let his own son die uh, on a tree, on a cross, and uh, for your sins and my sins and the sins of the world, uh, that we would be able to live and live uh, with him for all eternity. And I, that's all I've got to say. I'm going to uh, hush before we're here at about 9 o'clock. Uh, but we, we've done the, uh, we've had a good service, and I appreciate uh, each and every one of you that's come out. And uh, we miss Mom and, and, and Dad. <laughs> it's a... Uh, uh, we always miss them when they're not here, but we understand uh, they need a little break. So they're getting a little bit of a break, and Jeff and Alicia. So 
uh, but we just we come here to to worship God anyway and, and to talk about him and, and praise him and lift him up uh, and that's what I feel like we've done tonight and uh, we've let our light shine and we just appreciate our, our church family we appreciate Holly so very much because if she wasn't here we'd be in a world of trouble uh, y'all don't know how much that little girl does up there to keep this thing going but we really appreciate her give her a cheer all right well go ahead and pray and be dismissed uh, Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to come in your house tonight and sing songs about you and uplift your name, Father, for it's not uh, about us being seen. It's not about how good we can sing or play or do anything. It's all about you, Lord, Father, and we just want to let our light shine uh, for you. We want to let others know uh, about the saving knowledge of you, Lord. We want to let others know uh, about the blood that your son shed for our sins and their sins, Lord, that they can uh, have life and have it more abundantly and be with you one day uh, over in paradise in heaven, Lord. Lord, Father, Father, we just pray that you'll be with us tonight as we go our separate ways, Father, and we just pray uh, that you'll keep your hand of protection, Lord, upon us. Father, we pray that you'll be with uh, the children, Lord, as they go back to school next week. Father, we just pray that you'll uh, protect them, Lord, Father, and Father, we just pray that you'll uh, always be with us, and we know you will, Father, and we just pray that we'll always be in your will. And Father, we just praise you and thank you for all that you do for us, for it's in the mighty name of Jesus uh, we pray. We'll be here Sunday at Sunday school, 10 o'clock, preaching at 11, and 6 o'clock preaching, I think. We don't have another taping for a couple of weeks, right? 23rd or something like that. But thank you all for coming, and I hope you have a good